Hello, friends, and welcome to another episode of the This Is Gonna Hurt podcast with Jay Gordon Duncan. And if you're wondering why the Jay, the answer is I'm not a bagpipe player. And if that joke doesn't make any sense, I encourage you to check out episode zero where I explain that joke as well as the purpose of the This Is Gonna Hurt podcast where we talk about faith, family, fitness, finances, and sometimes fun. Well, hello, friends. Welcome back to the This Is Gonna Hurt podcast. Thank you, thank you, thank you. My name is Gordon Duncan. Uh, I, I hope you never get tired of it. I just can't start a show without saying thank you. Um, the the views, the listens, uh, it's just like we're in a brand new season. I guess so. Uh, when we hit that 400 uh, episode mark, and we started recording here. I mean, it was brand new. We approached it a little bit differently. And last week's episode with Jay Lee was fire. Whether you are a coach or need a coach or in sales or not, uh, Jay was so inspiring. The week before that was Susan Coleman. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed some things, and we've had a little bit of variety, a lot more guests lately. Uh, and by the way, this is a solo round. Hope you can hang in there. Uh, but uh, we've had uh, Susan Coleman. We've had Jay Lee. We have Mary Tanos. I did a couple episodes on coaching. There's a lot of emphasis on coaching right now. Uh, still doing faith, family, fitness, and finances. Every one of those folks have come from a different background. My friend Leon Brown was on. That was about uh, just some fun and, and his entrepreneurship and, and getting a movie going. Um, but uh, there has been a renewed emphasis on coaching. Uh, in fact, uh, recently we launched a brand new coaching program. We did a whole episode on that at CapitalizeYourBest.com. Uh, feel free to check that out. Um, but today is super practical, and I want to talk about Instagram. I will tell you, uh, by nature, I have always been given more towards Facebook. That might be my age. Um, uh, it, it was slow for me to get the rhythm of Instagram and how it works. TikTok's been slower. Those things are just the, the nature of new, using new platforms. Um, but I want to spend today talking about Instagram. And uh, I'm going to borrow a lot from other people, a ton, a ton, a ton from other people. I'm going to give you a structure about how to post, and uh, then I'm going to add my own insights to it. I'm not just going to take something I've heard. But recently, I gave a talk here in town uh, to about 35 business people talking about the different social media platform personalities. And real quickly, excuse me, uh, Facebook is that dinner party where you've got to get in there and you've got to contribute and listen and give and take. You can't just go out there and throw something on the table and leave. That's uh, that's real brief, the Facebook personality. Uh, but over on Instagram, you've got two things going on. You've got your feed, which is like that photo album, that yearbook of beautiful photos. And up top in your stories, that's where you've got the reality show of your life. Like, for example, uh, today I got up and in my stories... Uh, I posted a photo of myself running, um, and then I shared a reel that I created. Uh, I'm sure there's a picture of coffee in there somewhere. And then I just created a video about coming here, and I'll create a reel about my, where my videos and where my, excuse me, where my podcast is created. Whew, i got to calm down. Too excited. Uh, so that's the reality show this afternoon. There'll be something else going on. I'll share that. This evening, we got to get dressed up and go to a gala. That's going to be in there. Stories are reality show. But that feed, uh, that's way more important. Those are the really good-looking photos. That's where it's the yearbook. It's the photo album. That's where you want the best-looking photos. And then here, I understand it, we get tripped up. Well, I don't know what to post there. Um, well, I want to share with you a pattern that I've heard two people offer before. It's the A, B, C, D, Q approach about knowing what to post. And so I've got, I've got some notes here. I've got multiple things in front of me. Um, but basically, before you post anything on Instagram, it is the A, B, C, D, Q approach. Uh, I think I originally heard this from Jenna Kucher, who is just an Instagram monster, and then Russell Brunson, uh, who is the CEO and creator of ClickFunnels, uh, which is an online platform uh, really for sales. And so I've taken in a lot of their materials. Um, but it's the ABCDQ approach to knowing what to post on Instagram. Now, I'm going to say this. Uh, when you start taking this approach to Instagram, you're no longer a consumer of content, you're a creator of content. That means that you're purposely trying to grow your presence and your followers and probably trying to grow your business. 
You might even just say, well, I want to grow my Instagram large enough so I can monetize that. But the approach here is uh, you are purposely trying to grow your Instagram. And it's capricious. It changes a lot. Uh, For example, yesterday I created a reel, uh, which is essentially the the, um, TikTok portion of Instagram. And it blew up, uh, blew up for me that within an hour and a half, I had over 3,000 views. I was incredibly excited. Then today... I posted something which was in a similar theme, and an hour and a half later, I had 10. And you're like, what in the world? What in the world? I think I know what I did differently, and I'm okay with it uh, because I know how I want to vary my approach. But when you're trying to create that video, when you excuse me, trying to create that picture for your feed, you got to decide what to do. And so Jenna Kucher and Russell Brunson have offered this A, B, C, D, Q approach on what to post on Instagram. And so before you post anything, you've got to ask yourself these questions. And so again, remember, pictures in the moment, that's, that's your story, okay? But the, the pictures that you post in your feed, those are typically more well planned out and more staged, if you will. And so, for example, uh, here, at some point in time before I leave, I'm going to ask, ask Shane Dell, my incredible producer, to get a photo of me because there's great lighting in here, and she takes a good photo, and I'm going to want to use it later on for a preview, or uh, probably on Facebook, I'd use it as a preview. Hey, the podcast is coming up. On Instagram, I'll use it in my story, like, hey, I was in the midst of a recording today. And then if I do a post on Instagram, I will use that photo to say, hey, it's published. You'll find it in the link in bio, that kind of thing. But for you, when you're trying to decide, do I post this photo or not, or is this a good photo to take for Instagram, you want to ask yourselves the A, B, C, D, Q approach. So again, Jenna Kucher and Russell Brunson have been the people I've heard promote this the most. I believe it was originated from Jenna Kucher, if I'm not mistaken. And I'm going to add to you my thoughts about it. I, I, I agree with it for the most part, but I think there's some things I'd like to add to it. Okay? So, you're asking yourself, do I want to post this photo or should I take this photo for Instagram? That's where you're at. And you're purposely trying to grow your audience. You are no longer a consumer at that point in time. You are a creator. And that's a very important distinction. If you want to grow your Instagram, you've got to get beyond, it's really true for any platform, you've got to get beyond just consuming it and become a creator of it. Okay? So here you guys ready? You're either going to take a photo or you're looking at a photo. Do I want to post it? And then you want to go through the A, B, C, D, Q of asking yourself these questions before you post that photo or take that photo. Are you ready? Okay, first, A. A stands for aesthetic. Is this photo visually something that is attractive and consistent with my brand? Aesthetic. So is it a good-looking photo or a good-looking moment to take? And is it consistent with my brand? Those two both go together with aesthetic. So let me speak about each one. So aesthetic, is it a good-looking photo? Sometimes you get a great photo and you're like, oh, I love this photo, but it's too dark and you can't doctor it. You can't do anything. If you can't, that's got to go in your stories, okay? you got to document the moment. But you can't put it as a post because it doesn't look good. Okay, that's just it. But if it's a great looking photo, then you're like, okay, you know, it's bright. You can see your face. It's very clear. The shadows aren't too great. You know, you're you're dressed in the way you want to be dressed, those kind of things. And is it consistent with your brand? Is it consistent with your brand? What is your brand? This is where we need to spend some time. Like, are, are you aware of what your brand is? It's very important. Somewhere uh, around... Uh, I guess uh, I used to be really sloppily dressed. I really, I used to dress so sloppily. Uh, Someone once told me that my style was disheveled casual, which was not a compliment. And I didn't listen to him. And so finally, uh, I started to dress a little better around 2018. Uh, I just felt like I was um, a sloppy dresser. And I needed to do something about that. So I started to dress a little bit better by 20, around 2018. 
when I launched Capitalize as my full-time job in 2020, at that point in time, I was going to be spent. I was going to transfer my day from uh, the church and business world to the business world. And I knew in, in my brain, I said, "What I wanted to be able to sit down across the table from any person in town, in business, and for me, uh, exude a manner of professionalism." That was very important to me. And so people define professionalism very differently. Uh, but I wanted to have uh, my hair uh, tight. I used to have long curly hair. Um, I wanted to wear an outfit that was comfortable, but uh, that had some manner of style to it. But I could also sit across the table from someone who was in a, 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 a business outfit or a business suit. And when I was at work, I always wanted to present myself that way. And even if I wasn't, uh, I still try to put myself together. And so that became important. That became part of my brand, especially in 2020. And so when I take a photo to put on Instagram, that's what I'm asking myself. Unless it's like a throwback Thursday and it's funny, you know, and you're like, oh, look, how, and usually I'll do like a side by side. I did that recently, a side by side of super curly hair and then put together. But that's what you got to ask yourself. First of all, so you got to know that. That leads us to be brand. Is this photo aligned with the dream client and something they would engage with? Think about that. Okay, you've got to know, uh, if you're trying to grow your Instagram, you've got to know, what is my brand? Is and, and do you have a business? Are you a lifestyle brand? Are you a healthcare brand? Are you a service industry brand? What are you? And, and so you've got to know, your, you've got to define that. That's one of the things that we work on in the Capitalize Your Best program is help you get that nailed down to who you are. And so aesthetic is a good looking photo, but B, does the photo uh, attract your dream client to your brand? If you know your brand, but you don't know your dream client, then it's going to be missed. They won't hear it. So when you post that photo, you're asking yourself, does that fit with your brand's identity to your dream client? Uh, I, every now and then I make that mistake. And I was like, ah, I shouldn't have posted that photo. I'll just go take it down. It's okay. It's no big deal. Maybe some people saw it. Maybe some people didn't. Uh, most of the time, people don't even know. Uh, but that's just it. Aesthetic. Is a good-looking photo consistent with your brand? Do you know your brand? And will this photo attract the dream client to your brand? You've got to be able to – you've got to know who you are, that brand. you got to know who your dream client is. And then you got to make sure that what you're posting is appealing to them. It's very, very important. Uh, you will – typically attract people up to your aesthetic but rarely above it so if you choose hey man i'm going to be super casual right super super casual it's gonna be really hard to attract that person who's above your style unless you've got incredible proof of concept right incredible proof of concept you know you see these billionaires dressing super chill right uh, and by the way, those, their, their ball caps cost, you know, $1,000, but they look super chill. That's fine. They've earned the right to be that way, right? But at this point in time, if you're trying to grow your Instagram and you're going to be a creator and not a consumer, well, you got to make sure you understand that your brand presentation is going to be what's used to attract your client or to grow your numbers. So are you attracting that or not, right? So aesthetic. Is it a good-looking photo to attract people to your brand? And brand, is this the photo that makes your ideal client go, yes, I'm interested in that? A, B. Let's talk about C, consistent. Consistent. Is this photo consistent with what's the rest of your feed? You know, people will go and look at your whole entire feed. They'll scroll up. Is there a consistency, like a, a consistency in lighting? Um, is there a consistent – I know some people who use the same filter in every single photo or some variation of it. Is it consistent? It's, you know, if it's so obtuse from what your page typically does, it probably shouldn't go there. Again, we're talking about being a creator, not a consumer. If it's a photo you want to share and it's so different than the rest of your feed, throw it up in the stories then. But your feed is about consistency. As much consistency as possible. Recently, uh, we posted something over at Capitalize uh, that was a good graphic, but it really wasn't consistent with our feed. And it showed in the numbers. 
Like, the numbers have been climbing, but when that one got there, it dipped. And especially in the reel. We noticed we created some reels. We were, we were tracking, tracking, and we used that one. It was a good-looking graphic, but not consistent with our feed, and then took a dip. And if let me give you this advice. If you're in the midst of a rebrand, you've got to decide yourself. You might want to go in there and get rid of some old photos. You might need to. Because if the rest of your feed looks so different, uh, you know, might you might have to do that. You know, we used to do this every other strata. We do a photo and then we do a graphic, photo and graphic, and the graphic was supposed to be informative. And so we had this nice like checkerboard look, um, but we moved away from that. And we had to get rid of some of those old graphics that didn't look good. And then like the next five or ten photos were really really consistent. We had to create like a new um, a, a new pattern for folks to follow. So we left some of those up there because we thought they were quality content, but then the ones that were really off-brand, we just got rid of it. So aesthetic, good-looking. Uh, B, brand. Is it going to attract the ideal client to your brand? C, consistent. Is it consistent with the image and the feel that you have on your feed? Four is D, and that's diversity. But is it different than the last photo? So consistent means it's consistent with the feel. Diversity means it's a different photo. If every photo is the same exact same spot, that, that's boring to people. They're not seeing anything new. I know a couple of people in the fitness realm that take the same photo every day, but that's their brand. That's like, hey, sh I'm going to show you my progress, that kind of thing. But it's rare for you to grow your content that way. It really is. Diversity. Are you mixing it up? Are you taking photos of different things? Even if every day your photo is a photo of yourself, that's fine. It's got to be in a different place, a different outfit. It's got to be put together differently. So that's the question. Is it diverse enough? And then finally, A, B, C, D, Q. And the Q is quality. Is this photo of a quality consistent with what a client could expect from you? So let's say that you, uh, you offer social media as your services, uh, or you do videographer or, or a videography or any of those, those um, industries. Well, if you put something up, it better look good. If you can't do good social media for yourself, people aren't going to hire you to do social media for them. If, if you are a videographer, if you're not putting up good videography for yourself, other people aren't going to want it. It's got to be of a quality that people want to hire you. That's specifically for businesses or professionals who are trying to grow themselves as a brand. It's got, it's, it does have quality. That's when you have something you're trying to hire to others. Less so for people who uh, are just trying to grow their numbers to get monetized. You've always got to have quality. But here, uh, the Q question is, uh, is it of a quality that people could expect uh, for them and be happy with it? So let's do a recap, guys. So uh, if you're thinking about posting something or taking a photo for Instagram for your feed, a, B, C, D, Q. So aesthetic. Is it aesthetically pleasing uh, to the eyes of anyone in your brand? B, your brand. Will this photo attract your ideal client to your brand? C, consistent. Is it consistent with the other photos in your feed? D, diverse. Is it more than just the same photo in the same angle every single time? And Q, quality. Is it of a quality consistent with what your clients could expect working with you? If you take this approach, you are going to see your Instagram improve. You will. It's a long, slow road. I know you see folks who just blow up all of a sudden. But it's a long, slow road. But consistency matters. Again, guys, just for this podcast, 400 episodes now, we're, we're, I don't know what this is, 409, 410, I don't even know. But it took to 400 to build the audience of 30-some thousand that we have. And then we took another leap, right? Then we jumped into the quality of the studio. It makes a difference. So, friends, I hope this has been helpful to you. It's the ABCDQ of Instagrams. Again, this pattern I heard uh, from Jenna Kucher and then Russell, Brand, um, Russell Brunson. Not Russell Brand. That'd be cool. Um, so, hopefully it's helpful to you. Also, if you would like help growing your brand, I would encourage you to go to CapitalizeYourBest.com. That is CapitalizeYourBest.com. That is our brand-growing marketing brand 
program. I hope this has been encouraging, and I look forward to catching you soon. Guys, thanks so much for watching and listening, and we will be with you again next week. Thanks so much, friends. Bye-bye. How do you shorten the time it takes to buy a car? Car buying just got easier. Pohanka365.com lets you complete as much or as little of the car buying process online. Pohanka365.com, car buying simplified. Anytime, anywhere.